All right, this here is what I will need to build a new Eurorack modular system power supply. My old one is having some issues, not to mention that it's severely underpowered for modern setups. So I thought this would be a good chance to build a new one. I've got my power transistors, new board, new transformer, capacitors, all the tools laid out here. And I thought this would be a good chance to make a video about that, go through the process and build a new power supply. Let's do it. So before I get started, there are a couple of things I need to take care of. First, one of the voltage regulators needs its pins bent so that it will fit on the circuit board. Pins one, three, and five need to be bent outwards, just like this, so it'll fit in place on the circuit board. The other one doesn't need any bending of legs, it just fits right in. Now I've gone ahead and added the standoffs from the old power supply to this new board so it'll sit off the table just a little bit so I can put in through hole components with enough space left on the bottom. All right, so the second issue is this power supply mounting hole right here. This power supply here did not come with this power supply board and it didn't come from Erica Synths either. I ordered it from Bowser and I just made sure that I got the right specifications that I needed for this. However, this power supply mounts with a M6 screw. And this mounting hole over here is not for M6. So I will need to drill out that hole. And for that, I'm just going to use a quarter inch drill bit to drill out this hole here for M6. So I'm doing that now before I have all the fragile components attached to the board and I'll also remove the voltage regulators before I drill the hole. All right, so now that that's done, the next step is to solder all the through hole components to the board, except for the capacitors here and the voltage regulators, and of course, the large power transformer. All right, so what I'm doing for this step is I have schematic, bill of materials, and my assembly guide sitting off to my computer on the left. And I'm just using that as a reference to check back on as I assemble the components onto the board here. This is just to make sure that I don't make any mistakes and it's just generally best practice for this sort of stuff. All right, so I have all the components, except for the transformer, soldered to the board. Now, I haven't done the transformer yet because I want to go over some of the details of how exactly you wire it into the board. I've decided to cut out the section about transformer wiring just since I really didn't know what I was talking about and it really wasn't that interesting anyways. So unless you guys want a specific video about transformer wiring, I have just removed that here. All right. So that pretty much wraps up the assembly of this here power supply. I've done a couple things off camera, including adding a zip tie and adding these lugs for the power rails. And now I'm gonna go throw it in my modular case, see how it works.
All right, so I've got my multimeter just hooked up to positive 12 volts over here, and I'm just gonna go in and adjust it. So it was at this point that I realized that something was probably wrong. So I changed what outlet I was plugging into, tried some other stuff, check connections, but none of that was the issue until I realized that there's a fuse in the power input of the case. And when I checked that, this is what I found. That is a blown fuse. There's no current passing through that thing. It wasn't the fuse on this board, it was the fuse on the power connector here. My guess, right now at least, is that this fuse has simply gone bad due to old age, not due to an issue with current draw. However, before I replace it and just switch the whole thing back on, do a little bit more looking just to make sure that nothing's wrong and this wasn't blown because of this power supply drawing too much power, drawing too much current due to some issue with the assembly, some sort of short circuit. Alright, so after a quick hardware store trip to get a new fuse, I am going to replace this. This is a 500 milliamp fuse, and since this is a much larger power supply, I'm going to replace it with the same type of fuse that's down here actually on the power supply board, which is a 1 amp 250 volt fuse. Let's see if that does the trick. It would help if I plugged in the power cable. Let's try that again. Hmm. That fuse is in plumb. So, looks like we have an issue somewhere else. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this panel right here and make sure that all the connections in here are happening the way that they should. Okay, wait, what? I'm so confused. All right, I think I know what happened. The power strip that I was plugging this into, I think had a loose connection into the wall socket and when moved around, probably caused some sort of jump or an arc that blew this fuse, which very fortunately I imagine protected the new power supply. And when I then tried, then after replacing the fuse, trying to plug it in to the same power strip, that power strip had a loose connection that wasn't actually giving any power here. So when I switched it over to the other power strip, that fixed it. And the reason that I didn't realize that before is because when I switched the plugs before, that was when the fuse was still blown. So that didn't work. So I assumed that it wasn't anything to do with the power strip, but it was. I might even remove this whole bit just due to how stupid it is. <laughs> or maybe someone will learn from it. But I guess that means that I can go back to doing what I was doing before, which was tuning the voltages of the power supply. 
All right, so my process for this is pretty much as follows. I've got my multimeter just connected up to the 12 volt rail here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and there's this potentiometer here, trim pot, that will allow me to adjust the voltage and I will just tune it in until it's exactly 12 volts. Slip it on. So you're 14 volts there. Should put the screwdriver on there. Nope, that's up. Other way. Let's bring it on down. Good bit. 4, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1. All right, there we go, that looks good. Now, I'll turn it off. Actually, I don't think I need to, I'll just switch over what I'm connected to and dial in the negative 12 volt rail. All right, that's good to me, negative 12 volts. I think that's good, calling it good. I will plug in a module, test it out, see how it works. All right, so this is an elements module that I built, and I'm gonna use this to test out the new power supply. So I chose this one because it has a bunch of LEDs that should light up when you turn it on and when you hit this play button here. So let's see what happens. Well, that's no good. Used to me. I feel like I'm missing something. Alright, so what I'm going to do is put in a 2 amp fuse instead of the 1 amp or the 500 milliamp that I was trying before. And if there's an issue, the fuse that is farther down the line on the actual board of the power supply, that one will blow instead of this one. I'm a bit hesitant to do this, but I think that that fuse down there should protect the the circuitry. Let's try it out. That looks like what I want. 12 volts. I'm gonna let this sit for a little while, see what happens. See if it um, blows the fuse again. See if anything gets hot as well. I know that it's possible for some power supplies to display a different voltage when they're loaded than it is when they are completely unloaded in a situation like this, which makes me think that adjusting the voltages here on the board before attaching a module might mean that the actual voltage will be much higher once a load is applied. which that is true for some switch mode power supplies, I just don't know if that's true for this one. I'm gonna try playing in a module again, see what happens. First, I'm gonna switch this off. All right, let's try it out. That's a bit better. That's what I was looking for. And it looks like the loading issue is not an, is not an issue at all. Um, it looks like it maintains the correct voltage even when under load. 
Well, the camera battery decided to die on me right there, but that's what I'm looking for. It looks like this is a good power supply. Everything turned out okay, despite some issues. I believe that the main thing is that this just needs a higher amperage fuse. Actually, you can't see what I'm pointing at. This here just needs a higher amperage fuse, somewhere around two to three amps. Now, the fuse on the board there is a one amp fuse, or at least that's what it's marked, or I should actually say what the parts list says it is, is that it's a one amp fuse. The marking says something like 3.15, which I assumed was not the actual amperage rating, but given this information now, that actually me might be what it is. So, two amp fuse here, if that blows again, I'm probably going to put a 3 amp fuse in here and call it good because I think that this power supply is just rated for a lot more than the power supply that was in here before, which it is. This is a 2.5 amp power supply and I think the previous one was only something like 750 milliamps. So probably what I'm going to do next is do a test with an oscilloscope. I'm going to see what the ripple voltage is like, how smooth the output is. Um, I might put that on this video and I might, or I might tack that on as like a addendum, just kind of a, a additional video to this one. Other than that, that's the whole thing. That's the build of this power supply. Thank you very much for watching. Um, check out the video that I have on building this. Um, it's not as much footage of the actual build, it's more information just about what to make sure you do while building it just mistakes that I made that you can avoid. Um, but it's still an interesting video and worth a watch. I have some interesting videos on old synthesizer stuff, um, the Casio PT-10, and got some other good videos coming up. And, and in addition to all that, this. This is the next upcoming project, an Erica Synths DIY output module. Got that in the same order as this power supply here, and that's what's up next. So stick around if you want to Catch that video.